This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. That is the actual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the rampant inequality in America in his famous March on Washington speech, not the whitewashed portion of the speech that Republicans cherry pick every MLK day. One of the biggest defenders of King's legacy is his daughter, Dr. Bernice A. King, who, along with other family members, will be attending the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington this weekend. She's also written the introduction to a new 60th anniversary collectible edition of I Have a Dream by her father, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I spoke with Dr. King and asked about how she feels when right-wingers make the absurd argument that her father's legacy is really Trumpism and MAGA conservatism. You know, I've gotten to the place now, I'm 60. Um, I've lived long enough to know um, that there will always be people who will misappropriate, mishandle, whitewash, um, whatever else you want to call it, uh, my father and his words. And what has really helped me in my growth is being a Christian and knowing that people do the same thing with the Word of God. And so although I have moments when I first read it, um, I process it, but I know I have a responsibility to elevate the conversation, not to get in the muck and the mire with them. And so my job is to speak the truth and let the truth sit there, not just for them, because there are other people that are also reading. So for the ones who are on the peripheral, for the ones um, who may not be, you know, as you say, the Trumpers, uh, I want to make sure they understand, no, that's not Martin Luther King Jr., this here is Martin Luther King Jr. And oftentimes, I may accompany it with something for them to go read <laughs> mm -hmm. so that you have the actual facts. Because my mother used to always tell us growing up, get the facts straight. People's opinion is one thing, but the facts have to be straight. Yeah, and you're a great defender of your mom's legacy, too, and she has an incredible legacy. We have to do a whole interview just about your mom as well at some point. Um, and, you know, and the thing is, is that Dr. King in real life, I mean, he was an admirer uh, of, of Malcolm X. He and Medgar Evers were very much on the same page. And these were all men who were very aggressive in their desire to see equality. The March on Washington was a yeah. demand. It was a demand of the Kennedy administration, yes, not a cheerleading session for the Kennedy administration. What do you think that we get wrong in the way that we look at and commemorate the march? And what should we do differently? How should we think about that march 60 years ago? Well, I think we have to do as my father. My father saw himself as a defender of freedom, justice, and equality, regardless of who was in the White House, um, friend or foe. Um, because if there were things that, the at that time, the Black community did not have, he was going to speak up for that and challenge whatever administration it was. I think we have to remember what you said, they had demands. We, we should always do demonstrations with legislation. You know, they had 10 demands, uh, as you probably well know. Um, and some of those demands over the next couple of years actually were met, like comprehensive civil rights, where, you know, blacks at that time had access to public accommodations. Uh, as you know, the injunctive reliefs when your constitution, no rights are violated. Well, you know, the Justice Department being able to do that, they wouldn't have been able to do that for George Floyd, you know, had they not set the stage for that kind of demand at the March on Washington. So we have to do the same thing today. Any protest, any march, any dis demonstration, we got to be clear on our demands. I mean, succinct and clear. <laughs> so it's not mm -hmm. mixed. And it has to be a collective, you know, it, 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 on their demand at the bottom, it says support does not necessarily, support of the march does not necessarily mean endorsement of every demand listed. So it says to me, at least that group that came together, which initially they weren't all together, as you know, historically, mm -hmm. yep. the NAACP and Urban League didn't first sign on. 
Um, but when it came time to the actual march, everybody was on board. And for the most part, most of the demands they agreed to. We've got to figure out how to get on the same page, how to create a coalition that gets on the same page, agree at least on some preliminary, some, some excuse me, at least three or four demands, um, and then follow it through. Because this, the March on Washington was not just a march or a demonstration. It was That's part right. of the greatest strategy. You know, uh, and as you know, after then, the children were bombed in the school. Uh, I mean, at, um, at the 16th Street Church. But then you had the um, the movement in um, St. Augustine, Florida, which was right. all a part of this. There were things going on constantly to make sure whatever these demands are, we want to see them through. Yep. It's about having a plan, following through, and as you said, demonstrating is a part of it. Uh, but truth is a part of it, too. We're going to have to have you come back on and talk a little bit yes. about that, because there's a lot of fighting about not wanting history to be told, particularly the history of your great father. Exactly. Um, thank you, Dr. Bernice thank A. King. You so it's much. always a pleasure. Thank you. I thank appreciate you.